In Germany, we believed in diplomacy. We believed in bringing people to a table and discussing. And um, But Putin and Putin's war is something that you cannot explain and that has no rational to it. And um, So if times are changing, we also need to adapt our policy, our foreign policy, our defense policy. When the chancellor came here to Washington 10 days before, he promised that the reaction to an invasion would be, quote, unified and decisive. And at the time, you know, that was strong language. And at the time, I think there were people in this country, there were people in Germany, there were people in France, there were people in, the, in other countries in Europe who, who wondered whether that would actually be the case. And I think if you click up a level, the the degree of unity and decisiveness that has come from the transatlantic relationship writ large, Canada, the US, and, and European countries, has, has surprised many people, including the people who are executing the policy in some sense. I mean, everybody seems quite surprised by how much we are hanging together. Without this war, we would be talking about how is it to have a uh, traffic light coalition, to have three parties in it. Uh, coalition treaty of uh, where you have nuclear sharing in it, where you have some sort of two sentences on Nord Stream 2, which you could have told a long story how those two sentences got into the coalition treaty, and you know what? Nobody cares about them anymore now. But I thought at the beginning it would be not an advantage to have three parties in a coalition concerning the, the, um, the foreign policy capabilities of, of the executive. It, in theory, it could be a disadvantage. And it now turns exactly into the opposite. It's the strength of this situation. I think it's so important that, uh, that this is not a NATO case because it's, um, the Ukraine isn't part of it. And if it's an Article 5 situation where we would have to fight along, um, probably Putin wouldn't have um, gone that way um, because that would be leading to a World War III. And that's nothing that we want. So I think um, to be really, really cautious in our next steps. And um, what you see in Germany right now is the same as in the US, energy prices going up. Um, the liter um, diesel is more expensive than a normal liter of petrol. Um, it's up to two euros. And we are trying to help people um, with subsidies and um, measurements in um, making their bills um, payable. But it's, we are highly dependent, and Nord Stream 1 being potentially shut down now. Both um, the frontline NATO members, if you will, and also the Nordic countries, both those that are members of NATO and those that are not, are going to require particular kinds of support, which are going to challenge, both challenge NATO in some really new ways, going to challenge the EU in some really new ways. And for both, although they're, they're different sets of challenges, um, a sort of US-German partnership and a, a common mindset on how to manage are going to be very, very important. And I think that those will pose different tricky political challenges here and in Germany. And um, we'll have to manage those as, as adroitly as, as we just did. What is our European defense strategy to really come together and think about that? Where do we want to have different competencies? How can we also do the research and development together? We are also talking about taxonomy now, um, so about the industry. Um, do we, um, how do we label um, the production in our country, in the EU? Is it harmful or is it not? And if it's harmful, then investments are probably going to be made in the US and we need to import our weapons and other military needs. And I think that's a whole discussion now that we need to have on a European level, how do we see our strategy moving forward and who brings what to the table? The relationship between France and Germany, and not only like as neighbors and bigger countries, but if you look at, at the security debate we had in the last year, so obviously the challenges of, of uh, Olaf Scholz also um, addressed that in his speech of, of, um, of export and, and, and 
technology on in security issues is, is something where Germany will now be adjusting. So, and we are glad that there is France to, to do this together um, in Europe. We are struggling with this international position after World War II, after unification, what our role is. So, but this has been decided now, more or less, I would say. So this was the last, the very last step to be decided. So it will change something within our society. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we will not disintegrate security-wise from the European Union, never, ever. And we will definitely not, with the experience of the last 12 days, deintegrate from security with the United States and they come on.